Hey everybody, this is Brandon from Sparksmith, and today we're going to go over the grill bars that we make for the 03 to 07 Chevy Silverados. We've got uh, about four different variations now. We're going to go over the uh, physical installation of the bar, which is the same across all of them, and then we'll go over the electrical part of it, which varies a little bit from bar to bar. To do the installation, you're going to need just a couple of basic tools. You'll need something to pop the tabs loose up here, and you'll need a drill bit with an or a drill with an eighth inch drill bit and a 10 millimeter socket. So most of you guys probably already know like removing the grill is super easy on these trucks. Um, it's not like a lot of the newer stuff where you've got 32 different bolts to get these things out. You've got these little pop tabs here. Once you get all the wheels off, this shield. And of course the grill just pops right out. There's four snap in the middle and then there's one on each wing. So once you get the grill off, this one, we had done the install previously, but you can kind of see there's two nuts on the back that are holding the, the grill badge on. So if you take those nuts off, your bow tie badge comes right off. And then on the front side, there are these two little pockets between the chrome and the, uh, the black plastic on the back. You take your drill bit with your eighth inch drill your drill with your 8 inch drill bit and just get eyeball it as close as you can to the center of this little rectangular, rectangular opening on both of these and drill your 8 inch hole and the kit will come the bars this is a wide only so it'll look kind of like this where these two long number six stainless screws are pre-installed all these nuts on here are just finger tight you're going to take all those off run the screw from front to back all the way down then add a flat washer and the lock nut onto the back side and tighten it down you'll need an eight millimeter socket or wrench to tighten that guy down um, and of course the Phillips head on the front and run it all the way through when you're done on the back side it'll look kind of like that just make sure they're good and snug because you want to get that tight so that when you tighten the bar down on the rest of the stud, this part doesn't spin. So once you've got those on there, put your bow tie badge back on. Because once the bar is on, you're not going to be able to... It's be very tricky to get these nuts back on here. So go ahead and get that guy back on. And on all this stuff, be careful not to over tighten it. So if you're using an impact like this, don't go nuts with it because the studs, all these, this number six hardware that we use, it will break if you use an impact or something with too much force. The next step of the install, take the bar and it'll be in two pieces. We'll do that just so it's easier to shift. And you'll, there'll be two screws and nuts that are just finger tight here. So you'll loosen those up, slide, the stainless steel bar into the other black bar. So you'll have a couple of, again, number six stainless screws. We'll run those through the back of the second bar and then through the stainless adapter. bar should come with, this is just a 764 Allen head, um, so one of these should be included with your kit. 
you can use that to hold it steady on this side, and then just a number eight, or sorry, eight, an eight millimeter socket on this side. Again, it doesn't take much, so don't overdo it on these. Once you've got these two short screws tightened down, you flip the bar over so that the wide face of it is facing out through the grill. And you're going to have to bend it just a little bit. Um, just kind of take the thumb there, it's, it's fairly pliable material. When you lay the bar in, on either end of the grill, there are these two little cast ribs. The bar is designed to fit right in between those on both sides. So fit those there, and then gently push the bar down. The eight inch holes that are pre-drilled into this bar where those were mounted when you got it, it'll kind of snap down onto those. The idea is that there's some spring tension from this plate that'll hold the ends of it in place. Once you get that down, put just like the short screw, the flat washer, lock washer, and a nut on both studs. You want to tighten it to the point that the face of the bar touches right up against the back of the plastic of the grill. Don't go too much more than that. Again, it'll probably snap apart. Um, so that's it for the physical installation. That's all there is to it. Mount the studs and tighten the two short screws down and then mount the bar on the studs and tighten those down. This one installation again is the same on every variant that we have for these split grill cat eye bars. Um, next, we move on to the wiring. This one is a white only, so it has just a white LED strip inside each of these bars that comes on anytime your factory daytime running lights or parking lights are turned on. need to do is pull the headlight on this one because if yours is like mine you had to run a screw to keep this guy from popping out or if you, if you don't know this little trick there's the way these lower ones mount these ears when they go they just snap into place a lot of times that plastic will get weak and it'll start popping out. So if you just take a standard little self-drilling screw, install this all the way, and then run that screw down, it'll keep it from popping out so you don't have to go buy a new housing. If that's you know the only issue. Um, when I say running light and parking light, the running light is the inner one. Uh, most of them it should be a white plug. On all of them it will be the one that has two wires. And then the park and turn signal bulb is the one that has three wires. So you'll take those out. Take your harness. And once you get these out, remove your bulbs, whatever bulbs you're running in there. In your box, there should be two tubes of this stuff. It's dielectric grease. Peel the foil cap off, and you're going to want to put a fair amount, just enough to kind of fill the cavity in both of these plugs. On the other ones that have a turn signal function, there'll be a third one on the passenger side. You do the same thing. There's enough grease to do that, and then some. Make sure you get some grease in there. If you don't, you will end up with corrosion on your plugs, and the bar will just stop working, and that's it. Um, it becomes very difficult to fix after that. So once you grease it, find a two-wire plug. We'll have a black wire and a blue wire. Line that up. You have to clean them off so you can actually see the color. But the factory wires have one that's black and one that's blue. And so you'll, when you squish this kind of flat, you'll see the black is clearly to one side. So line up the black wire with the black wire. 
and reinstall whatever bulb you're running for your running light. And turn signal. It's going to be the same thing. You've got grease in there. So there's three wires, but still you can kind of flatten them out and tell which way is the black wire for ground, and that will line up with the black wire from the factory plug. Make sure you feel it kind of click into place. Okay, put that guy back in. Then you're ready to plug your bar in. So it'll be on the white only, it's just a single two wire plug. Um, and plug it in so that the catch on the female plug lines up with the hook part of the male plug. And it should clip into place. If you do have any dielectric grease left over, it's not a bad idea to just squish a little bit into that female plug. A little extra precaution there. And you're going to install your grill, top plate, and then if your polarities are all correct, the white one will come on anytime this bulb or this bulb are on. If it doesn't immediately come on, Polarity is just backwards somewhere, so flip the plug over. Then you've got your white running light that'll come on anytime the parking lights or the running lights are on. Next, we'll go over the sequential switchback and the standard switchback, which have identical wiring, just a little bit different function to them. And then we'll show you the difference between those and the animated bars. All right, so we showed you the wiring for the white only bars, and we're going to also we're going to now go over um, the wiring for if you've got the sequential or if you have the just standard switchback, which yes, we're now going to start introducing these standard switchbacks because I know some of you guys like to just have that without the animation. Uh, so as before, make sure that you grease up the sockets. On the driver's side, it's the same. When you get your harness, you want to kind of lay it out so the two adapters that are close together, put them to the driver's side. And then the other adapter that's off by itself, that one goes to the passenger side. And as before, the three wire is going to go to your turn signal plug. And again, make sure that black to black. And then the two wire, line it up black to black for your daytime running light. And then install your factory bulbs or whatever bulbs you're happy you're running. Um, this one. This truck is still running the incandescent bulbs in the turn signal, but with our harness, you now have a resistor built in. So if you wanted to run an LED or something in your turn signal, you can do that without any issues of hyper flash or something like that. Um, so install those back. On the passenger side, it's the same process. Um, just make sure it's black to black on the turn signal, the outer one. Line it up so that the black wire here lines up with the black wire there. Plug that in. Install whatever bulb you choose. The resistors, we include a self-adhesive backing that you can use to like glue them in place on the on the wall here or you can use it actually comes with screws you can also use those uh, they don't get very hot because they only have power when you're using your turn signal so they don't constantly have power um, so they're not going to get incredibly hot so the self-adhesive backing is more than enough to hold these guys in place 
Honestly, I think most of you just let them dangle. That's fine. There's enough other stuff there to kind of hold them in place. If you're if you're like me and you're very particular about how things are wired and how things are laid out, we have a couple of options for you to do a nice, neat mounting job. Uh, it's up to you. So that's it for the sequential or the um, standard switchback bar. And then before you button everything up, we always recommend that you test it real quick. I'm just going to put these headlights in place so they don't fall. So if you just switch your parking lights on, the white should pop on. And then turn the key on and hit your blinker. You see what's happened here is the left side of the bar is blinking, but I turned on the driver's side. Sorry, the, the right hand bar is blinking and the driver's side or left hand turn signal is blinking. So if you get What's happened here where the wrong side is blinking. So like right now I've got the driver's side turn signal blinking and the passenger side bar is blinking. It's gonna have a plug with two yellow wires. The easiest solution is to just take that out, flip it and plug it back in and that will swap the sides for uh, from passenger to driver's side. If the turn signals are working but the white doesn't come on then make sure that either your parking light or your running light are working. So like in this case, it's the parking light that's on. Um, if that's not on, or if one of these isn't on, then the white's not gonna be on. Um, if one of these is on and the white's still not on, it could be a defect in the harness. It could be the plug for the white part of the, the function has power and ground. So just make sure that's plugged in tightly. Um, worst case scenario is you could try flipping that one around and see if that makes it come on. If, there, if you have any issues beyond that, just give us a call, uh, send us an email, find us on Instagram, uh, just contact us, we're happy to help. Sometimes things happen, but we will make it right for you. Uh, but just you know, give us the chance and we'll help you out. Um, but once you get everything working and you've tested it all, go ahead and reinstall your grill and button everything back up. If you have the animated startup bars, uh, which we'll show you some of those, like I've got them on my truck here in just a sec, the wiring and physical installation is exactly the same as what we just went over with the sequential or the standard switchback. Uh, the only difference is that your harness will have on the side that goes to your driver's side lights, you will have this one extra wire. You're going to want to route that up behind the headlight through the radiator support and then come up here to your fuse box. In your fuse box, you can see it, there's one in the top right corner that says Stop LP. It's a 25 amp fuse. That is for your brake lights. And that is something that has power all the time. What you want to do, pop this fuse out and then install that fuse in the bottom of this fuse tap. So there should be two fuses. It comes with a 10 amp. You wanna put that 25 amp factory fuse in the bottom slot and then install that back into the original position. And that's what will give power to your animated startup bar. All the other stuff is just a signal to it to tell it what function to turn on. This is what actually provides the power for it. And it's important that you get that 25 amp fuse installed back in there, otherwise it won't work. So that's the only difference between the sequentials and the animated startup. All right, so that is the basic installation process for the white only, for the switchback, the sequential switchback, or the animated startup bars. Um, if you guys have any questions or any comments or anything, please let us know. We're readily available, um, and we hope you enjoy the product. Thanks.